back over to the Gibson Hotel and say good morning to Philly McMahon. Philly, how are you doing? I'm not too bad. Uh, how does how does this one differ from previous years? What what's your sense of um, winning four in a row? Because technically four in a row means you're at least as good as every other team that's ever played Gaelic football, and right there with the three best. Uh, it's the same as the last one. I have to get up the next morning and do the media because I'm the only sober one. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, look, it's um, I don't really compare them, and I don't really look at the three or the four. It's for me. We had an opportunity to put smiles on, on Dublin people's faces and we've done it yesterday. Obviously, for you, Philly, I know this has been a, a very difficult year. Yesterday, you um, were wearing a T-shirt. You were talking about your dad in the aftermath of this as well. So, on a personal level, it's been um, a, a very difficult year to finish it with an All-Ireland medal. What, what does that mean for you? Uh, the last two years have been tough, you know. My dad got diagnosed with cancer um, about a year and a half ago. and and obviously he passed away this year. So, um, you know, it's great to have sport as a distraction when you have a family member that's that's terminally ill. And the support I've got from the Dublin community, certainly my Dublin teammates and the management team, has been a great distraction for me. So, um, you know, to to get the gift last year of my dad seeing me win, seeing me win an All-Ireland, and that was his last time he'd see it, uh, for me to do that this year and be a small part of it to, for other people was, was, was huge for me. And uh, uh, We're very grateful to be able to do that, put the jersey on and to be able to put joy into people's faces, I suppose. Yeah, like, I, I'm, it, it sounds like it was a release and escape for you as opposed to anything else. And, you know, you know I don't know how you managed to maintain your form in the, in the midst of all that. Yeah, look, as I said, um, it was a distraction for me and um, when my dad was alive, it, it was certainly something that I had in my head that was something that was, was helping him fight on and to get to the matches and stuff like that, you know, so um, it can be a distraction in a, in a bad way, but once, you, once you're, you use it the right way, it can, it can actually, you know, motivate you. So for me, uh, I'm just absolutely delighted that uh, I, I was able to to achieve what I achieved this year with what, was, what has happened. Yeah, uh, just to kind of broaden that out, then the, the ability that you've had this year to keep your place in the face of fairly intense competition. You know, we've seen some of the greatest footballers ever to play for Dublin struggle to keep their places this year in, in the face of the competition from the younger lads coming through. What are those training battles like at the moment, and and how close do you feel people breathing down your neck trying to take that jersey off you? Yeah, the. We kind, of, we kind of say every year the, the com competition is, is probably what drives us forward and, and ultimately gives us that, that all Ireland title and um, again every year there's new lads coming in and uh, they're adding so much energy to the group and and that proved again this year with the lads that you, you look at the bench um, this year and there's, there's probably two or three other forwards there that could have been brought on unfortunately it was it was three defenders and, and a midfielder and two forwards so, you know, Jim does a great job, the management do a great job at making sure that every year they add energy to the squad, to the players, and, and look at the lads buy into a really positive and strong culture. So that's what keeps the, the competition alive. Yeah, because we were just comparing the team that won the first of this four in a row, and even the one that won the, the first All-Ireland under Pat Gilroy. It's, it's almost a completely different team. Like, there's obviously a core of of key individuals involved, but like the turnover is happening at a, a real pace. Like the half forward line yesterday, very young lads, you know, think of um, Howard coming into the team, who's now a nailed on starter, it seems, who at the start of the year kind of was somebody people were just talking about. And then you look at uh, Owen Merchant and, and think <laughs> he's literally come from nowhere, it seems, to suddenly be somebody who, when there's a job to be done, he knows uh, exactly what to do. And, and it seems like Jim Gavin trusts him as well. So. It's cutthroat at the moment, the competition for places. Yeah, and look, at, you have to ask yourself, where are these lads learning from? You know, they're learning from quality players um, that have great attitudes. So how, how these lads add energy is they, they, they do, their, they do their, their apprentice, I suppose, and, and they learn from the players in front of them. Them three lads that played in the half-forward line, the three lads they've learned from are top quality players and have huge accolades. So. Um, that's happening all the time, and um, there's no egos. It's you know, there's there's a couple of lads there that didn't get game time yesterday, and they were they were understood. 
what their role was. Um, they obviously would be disappointed they didn't get game time. And there's lads there that weren't even on the squad that, that would be very disappointed. Um, but it's look at this team will, will never be the same. Every year it's going to change. Uh, and that's what keeps the competition lively that, you know what, who knows hell, who knows injuries, who knows that manager might and you might be a part of their their uh, selection next year. Um, you just have to grab what you have right, right now in the present. Tell us a little bit about your own game uh, yesterday. Uh, like, what what was the the level of freedom you have to go forward? Because again, we kind of see that you were one of those um, defenders who, when there was an opportunity to drive forward, you were piling forward from very early on. Yeah, um, friends to Tyrone, um, they they brought out certainly uh, the best in us in, in in terms of our preparation. We respected them massively. Um, for me, I was marking uh, a corner forward that was dropping back a little bit, so that gave me a bit of um, a bit of space to run into. They went man to man in the full forward line and full uh, half forward line, so um, that meant that we could dictate where we were trying to bring them, and, and that meant that we could kind of put up the middle challenge of the pitch. So um, that's just what happens when you play that st- style of football, that kind of defensive style of football, where lads are, are dropping into pockets to decrease their space so um, got up a good bit in the first half and then obviously when we took the lead I, my main role is to make sure that I support the lads in the back line and do my job defensively and win my individual battles so um, and after that it's just a, a bit of a bonus So were you surprised actually then that they did they have six forwards pretty much for it seemed like most of the first half because there was there was no sense that Keane Sullivan was actually sweeping even before he went off No, myself, Keane and Johnny were marking um, so we didn't really we have uh, the sweeper as much. Um, it was more. Did they have six up? They generally had two, up and they had probably one hovering around the um, the centre forward position. So depending on the transitions and what way they played, when they were transitioning up the pitch, they tried to get the six men up. But they probably were getting more of scores from uh, out the pitch and running at us than they were inside and, and turning and going at us. So. And um, that was a big learning, I suppose, from the game, just initially thinking of it. And was there a significant difference between the test that they gave you this time and what happened up in Oma? Very similar. You know, they came strong at the end. Um, if one thing we said we were going to do in this game was to, to have a better performance in an all Ireland final, we probably haven't done that in the last four, last three uh, before yesterday. So um, we were still a bit patchy, to be honest. And, and towards the end of the game, uh, we gave them a bit of a an open where they, they could get back into the game, which is not good enough. But look, at, this is what we like to do for all our influence. So make sure it's not not that easy and give it a bit of spectacle. Yeah, you we're you gonna say that we're going to say that we let them score, but we don't really. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you were doing your best giving away the penalty there, just saying, oh, seven minutes of stoppage time. Yeah, I'll give you the penalty and uh, get this thing going yeah. there. Yeah, that's me. we may call him Kevin. I gave him a little dig out and. Yeah, they, uh, they got a panel. <laughs> Steve, Stephen, Stephen, we just wanted to see how Stephen was for the panel. Keeping everybody on their toes, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, listen, good stuff, Philly. Go off and enjoy the day. Thanks a million for talking to us. Thanks very much.